Welcome to the Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. You don't have to know history, you don't have to know wrestling, you don't have to know matches. My belly's just a little big, my eye is just a little big, but brother, I am bad and they know I'm bad. There is no revolution. You are truly the future of Lucha Underground. I got it, I got it. How about a little heel turn? And no, if, if they piss somebody, if they took somebody off here, well then, you know, there goes their career. Well, don't piss anybody off. Hello everyone and welcome to the Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. The wrestling podcast to review Monday Night Raw and give all of you beautiful wrestling fans the wrestling news of the week. Now, once upon a time, in a galaxy far, far away, there was a podcast Jedi and his name was Turbo Tony. That is me, but I have a Padawan and he is with me this week and he is realising that he is the manliest of manly men Crushing on a manly man, William Regal. It's Matt Marsander. That's a lot of man. That, that's so manly, I don't even think I can contain I, it. I don't know how to take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <coughs> how, how are you doing, Matt, apart from that uh, very manly entrance for you? Um, fine. I'm much healthier now than I was when we did Lucha during the week. You have recovered then. Well, yeah, to an extent. To, 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 enough to be able to do our weekly episodic show, at very least. So. Yeah, I somehow managed to get through half an hour. I was, if I had to do the full show then, I don't know if I'd yeah, have Yeah, you pretty much spent after that half an hour, so... But you're here with us this week, and uh, were you, are you good enough to be able to take on a little bit more trivia this week? <sighs> I guess I can take trivia. I, I don't think you have a choice in that, to be honest, so, um, yeah, you'll have what? to. Uh, <laughs> so that was a bit of a redundant question right there, but still. Ready? Tough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right then, Matt. Uh, we've got a packed show this week. Plenty to talk about. A lot of news, actually, over the course of this week. Uh, before we get into that, we've got some plugs to be putting out there. Let's get that out of the way. If you guys want to interact with us here on this show, you can do so via Facebook, which is the main way to interact with us. Facebook.com slash Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. And of course, Matt, there is a Twitter handle. What would that be? You mean the Twitter handle of at Talk Wrestle Pod? That is the one. The one that you could contact Matt directly on. He deals with all the Twitter <laughs> shenanigans. And of course, you can send us any audio questions or emails to Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast at gmail.com. Plenty of ways to get in contact with us. Plenty of ways to interact with us here on this show. We've got some interesting news for to go through with you guys very soon. We also got the trivia and the Raw review, so, and we've also got the, you know, your guys' questions that we've answered over the course of this week. But Matt, it's time to procrastinate a little bit. little mini-segment here on the show that I'm sure some of our fans enjoy. What have you been up to this week, Matt? Um, back to work. Oh. Woo. That sounds... I've not been up to much. <laughs> yeah, that sounds exciting. Yeah, enthralling, almost. Um... I'm being sarcastic before the show's even began, and I feel a little bit like a bastard for it. But still, <laughs> I can't really turn it off, really. That's just the way it is. Um, I, it's my wife's birthday when this gets released. Sorry if you can hear someone asshole beeping outside my, my window, by the way. Uh, it's my wife's birthday the day this is released, so I'm, I'm preparing for that, trying to be a good husband, get all the gifts and all the stuff that, you know, that, that we could possibly need. Um, uh, and along those lines, so... And I'm missing you, Matt. You're right. You're, it just doesn't seem right not having you it's next to me. Recording. So gone. Just. No, it feels. It feels. Prepared. It feels like it's been so long. Mm. Yet, in the matter of week. It was like, what was it like Friday? Last Friday was when you left. So yeah, I was that long, <laughs> but it just doesn't feel the same. It just doesn't feel the same. That's it. Um, I'd like to feel like I've left a an empty spot. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, I was quite happy though, Man City. Uh, progressing in the Champions League this week, Matt. You watched me there when we were watching the first leg against PSG, and I was freaking out over that idiotic goal that we let let in, and but we managed to eventually sure. beat them. We're going to go going to go against Real Madrid in the next round and the semi-finals, Matt, of the Champions League. Of what you saw of Man City, do you think we're going to beat Real Madrid? You say of what I saw, but mm. I didn't really see much. You were just you were just going on about it, and I'm just like, that's nice. I'm going to carry on playing this video <laughs> game. Well, I'm going to answer it for you. No, I don't think we're going to get through, but I would very much like it if we could. 
Um, I was too busy tending to a farm. Yes, that farm needs tending to, Matt. That that uh, video game heroin, as I like to call it. But uh, we've talked about that a lot on this show. So, is there anything else that you'd like to procrastinate, Matt, before we get into the hard wrestling talk? Uh, I don't think I have anything else to add about it. No. No. Let's get into it, Matt, because we have done, we have some interesting news sections that I want to get into this week. First of which that has broken literally at just a couple of hours before we started podcasting here today. Um, Connor from The Ascension and Adam Rose have been suspended for 60 days for their second wellness policy violation. Um, now, Connor, I'm not as shocked about. He's not being used. Things aren't as great. Him taking a little bit of a smoke here and there, taking a little bit of the weed, Matt, doesn't entirely shock me, right? The one that does shock me a lot is Adam Rose. And the reason why I say that, Matt, is because that E60 documentary showed just how much he needs this job. But I still haven't seen. Yeah. But, Matt, like, I even take it just from me, Matt, like, he's got a lot riding on his employment at WWE. So to be able to risk it by taking some substance or getting in some trouble in this case, that just means it seems very odd, very strange. I mean, I'm not saying that it sounds dodgy. I'm sure he did it. But that just seems weird, that weird that you would get him, let, let himself get in that position sort of thing. You know? Like out of character for the situation that he's in. Yeah, right. I mean, like my, I'm not going to put myself in his shoes. I... I all I can say is that if I would try and keep myself as far away from anything like that if my child's health was was so well linked to how successful I am in, yeah. in the company. I'm sure he's making plenty of money and that's not a problem. I don't want people to run away with this and say Tony doesn't think he's a good dad or anything like this. But it's just there's so much more riding on his on his career than it is someone like Connors or something like that, you know. Yeah. So that's the only thing I'm saying with it there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's a bit tough. It's a bit of a dick move on Connor's part because he knows what it's like to suddenly just have your whole gimmick put under fire because someone else was a dick. Yeah, right. Like it's um, he he's been there. He's been in the shoes of that of of that situation. And you know, with the social outcasts, Matt, they'll be fine without Adam Rose for a while. It's not like them losing Adam Rose is going to be a big impact on that team. No, that's it. But in terms of the ascension, it's almost like the other. You know, Victor's not even going to be able to work. That he, it's like almost like he got suspended at the same yeah. time, right? So it is a sh- it is a shitty situation all around, and. Um, yeah, as you say there, Matt, when you've been on the wrong side of someone doing something to impact your own career, that you would expect him to be a little bit more conscientious. You know, of... Do you know what the worst part is? I can't even remember his name. What? The other guy. Victor. That's what I said, Victor. Not Victor. The oh, guy that... Bram, was... as he is in... Um... Yeah, he's Bram in the TNA, but I can't even remember what his ascension name was. I wasn't even watching NXT around that time anyway, so truth be told, yeah. I never even saw him in the Ascension. I so. was. You, uh, you, you, uh, you, were, you were a fan before it was cool, we all know that. I, do, I could be that hipster douche. <laughs> hipster douche a wrestling fan, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just shitty news all around. We don't want to, to talk about news like this, but it's just news that, that comes out, and i tell you what's around this like WWE obviously are keeping tabs on wellness policy violations like this unless you're like someone like Randy Orton if you do a wellness policy violation it's very it's, it's, it's not going to impact your career on a positive note it's going to hurt it yeah um, and I'm sure both these guys went in line for a big push anyway I mean come on but well in which case it's kind of a good thing that on um, like we'll mention it later when it comes to Raw but it's like it's a good thing they didn't win yeah yeah Imagine if they picked up a win in the considering the um like this what's going on at the moment. It's yeah. like, oh, this is awkward. Yeah, that they're in the tournament and suddenly that had to be taken out of it. Yeah, um, you know what, Matt? It almost makes me feel a little bit like I know WWE aren't uh, completely against letting these guys wrestle out their storyline, then suspending them, right? Yeah. So I don't know whether that was the case or anything along those lines, but the pair of them have been suspended. You won't see them for sixty days, and that it is what it is. So. Here's another bit. I put this up on the Facebook page, and it was a a tidbit of information that kind of went in at the end of last week, but we weren't able to speak about it then. But it was Tyler Breeze's win-loss ratio, Matt. And uh, did you catch this at all? I did. You did? It's, um, it's disgusting. Now, the record probably has a few more losses on it by the time that we're speaking about this. But as the time of it, of this story coming out, 
Tyler Breeze is 0 for 49 in 2016. He has a win-loss ratio, Matt, that the Brooklyn Brawler could snub his nose at. And when the Brooklyn Brawler can look at your win-loss ratio and laugh at it, you know that's pretty fucking pathetic right there. But yeah. um, it's... You know you're not in a good spot. No. No, he is. He's a jobber. That's basically his main role on this on on the main roster. Um, he's a, he's replying to guys. I feel really bad for him here because he was replying to guys on Twitter about it, um, saying that well, you know what, my bank account is doing great, and I'm sure it is. I'm sure he's being paid quite well. But Matt, there comes a point where no amount of money in your bank account will save the legacy that you leave in the company. I think what did he what did he put? It's like. I had so much go right, I was bound to get some wrong or something like that. It's just... I mean, obviously it sucks for him because he's in a situation... Nothing he does is going to make it better at this point. It's He's been he's been shoehorned. He, he may have pissed a few people off that he shouldn't have when he got in there. And now he's going to... That's basically stunted him forever at this point. Um, mm. But replying to people saying, you know what, my bank account's fine. At least that is a plus. But as I say... There's going to be a point in well, his Well, Truth his did that as well at one point, didn't he? Yeah, but it's like, sure, yeah, you'll have you'll have money, you'll have a good career for a certain period of time. No one's going to end up remembering him fondly, right? And um, yeah, I'm sure Virgil in his day was making some decent money. Would he trade that in now for at least being remembered as one of the greats of wrestling? I think he probably would, right? Yeah. Um, because he's because that's not how he's getting remembered. Yeah, right. He's the guy in conventions that no one wants to speak to. Is this yeah. what Tyler Breeze's future in thirty years is going to be? I I I, it's, I I feel really bad for him because it's not entirely his fault. It's, Vi- like, it's Vince shoehorned him in a situation. Yeah, like I don't know if they're trying to if WWE are trying to do something to save him because uh, they've been releasing these like he's he's almost got like his his own YouTube show or something. I don't know. Like it's almost like they gave like the um, like the crime time their own like fucking show on WWE.com for a short amount of time. It led to nothing, sort of thing. Yeah, it's almost like they're throwing these guys a, bo- a bone sometimes, but they've got no indication of what they that they're ever going to use them properly. But I'm sure people are kind of sad of, of of us harping on about Tyler Breeze, but it's genuinely how we feel. It's just a shitty situation all around. Yeah. Really, the only problem with it there, but zero forty nine. That is that is harsh. It's and I'm steep, sure, isn't it? I'm sure that um, someone's going to let us know, like in another like six months, like his win loss ratio in six months is going to be abysmal. I can promise you that. But that's it. That's it. Uh, here's an interesting. So there was a bunch of interviews that happened at the end of last week, Matt, between Bray Wyatt and Paige. Did you catch these? I didn't. I think I've heard like whisperings of like the Bray Wyatt one, but mm. I haven't heard much else. Well, basically, they were very interesting, and the reason I bring them up is because some people might talk to us sometimes and we leave, leave messages when we criticise the uh, the booking of uh, some of these people, and they might go, "Well, there is a story down the line, or there is something going on with them. We just need to be more patient." Um, you know, along those lines, whenever we try and make it seem as if WWE has no clue what they're doing, they're like, well, it's WWE, of course they have a clue, they just change direction at some point, and yeah. blah, 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 blah. And I wanted to bring this up, because when you've got talent coming out and openly saying, one, that WWE doesn't know how to book them, and two, that they even don't know if they're a face or a heel anymore, I think that ter- that, that shows a lot a lot here. Yeah. So I know, I know the whole they don't know how to book us, that was a Bray Wyatt quote. Bray, Bray Wyatt basically said that he doesn't think that WWE knew what they had when they brought them up. And I, I absolutely agree with him on that front. Like, they well, the thing is, know. I've always been a Wyatt fan. But to think that, like, in the beginning, he could have been made out to be just an absolute monster. Mm. But he could have, like, been against everything. Like, against... Oh, what was it I heard earlier or the other day? But someone was comparing it. Like, if you'd booked it correctly, you could have had someone who's who was essentially a mix of, like, Austin and Taker. Yeah. In the yeah. fact that it's like, I want to go against the machine. The ultimate machine is the company and WWE. I'm going against Vince. Yeah. So you've got, like, the Austin anti-authority. But he's a bit weird. Dark, so, yeah. Yeah, and that's Taker. Mm. And it's like, if you'd booked him correctly, you could have had something on a completely another le- different level. 
Oh yeah, yeah. And I, 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 I get the feeling about that when they got this gimmick in front of them, their writers didn't know how to correctly portray that gimmick on screen. Yeah. Like not, not in terms of the short term, because Matt, I might this might be a bit controversial. I think the first five months of the White family being around, I actually thought that was okay. I honestly thought the education and then bleeding us into this into this character and this gimmick, I thought that was okay. Yeah. It was the long term plan that was their problem. They didn't have a long term plan with the White family. Whereas as you say, Matt, slowly building in these slow building blocks of Bray Wyatt eventually taking down the whole establishment. Everything yeah. he's gonna burn it all down. That could have been like a two month. That could have been like a two year storyline for him. As he yeah, slowly that's it. Moves in, right? Um, yeah, it's one of those things where I'm sure that um, he's not the only one. But I think with this gimmick, it's so so out of the box, so out of the norm that when he comes out and says that he doesn't think that WWE knows what to do with them, I can absolutely agree. I I firmly believe that they don't have a good grasp on on. How well, hence why it's now hit a point. It's like um. Face turn, shit. Yeah, he's got, basically he's got the face turn. That's all he's got left, right, in his quiver of arrows. Because now he's been, you know, even the whole entire family, they've been broken up, they've been rebooted, they've been destroyed, they've been beaten, they've been laughed at at this point. The face turn is really all that's left. So hopefully it does work for him. The other one is Paige. Paige coming out in a, um, in a interview saying that she actually isn't sure at this point whether or not she's face or heel. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. That a talent doesn't know what their character is. That you yeah. know, uh, a WWE will get shitty with their talent when they don't perform at a certain level. How is Paige supposed to perform a certain way when she doesn't know even what her character is supposed to be like at this current time? And it's one of those things where WWE will just instantly turn people face or heel depending on how they're feeling that week. That's not good character. Well, that's it. Like. <sighs> I mean, not to go a lot on the attire, because, like, Paige for so long has been in the black. Mm, yeah. But she stood out like a sore thumb amongst, you know, oh, I don't want to use the term, amongst the total divas at Mania. Yeah, yeah. Because it was a whole lot of just sort of, like, blonde and bright colours, and then there's just Paige with, like, the dark, and she's got the whole... Um, like, Morticia Adams hairstyle going on at the moment. And it's like... I'm confused. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you. It's it's like she's lost. And if she doesn't know what her character is, and of course she feels lost, she doesn't know what to do. Uh, listen, guys, when it comes down to Paige, when you have a talent like Paige who has been waning a lot recently, but you know that she's great. She is... Guys, I'm going to say it right now. Yes, yeah, I've said before that she hasn't had a great match in a long time, but we know, Matt, that she is a great pro wrestler. We know it. Yeah. It's just one of those things that... Why hasn't she been reintroduced to the audience the way that she was pushed back when she was in the NXT days, right? Yeah. Like, in NXT, she was treated as if she was something different from the norm. When she came into WWE, it was very much, I am one of the one of the group. That didn't make her stand out. Suddenly, it was like she didn't stand out at all. I think that's where they started failing with like, her. So. If you look to see what the NXT Women's Champion has been since then, like, mm. who's held it? Yeah. Like... It's come a long way if you consider that of what Paige is now compared to what she was. Mm. Mm. Like, you can't compare, like, you know, we used to go to the whole, oh, how can they call it the Divas title and compare Kelly Kelly to, you know, Fabulous Moolah or anything mm. like that. Yeah. And now it's like, if you were to compare Paige now and Asuka, yeah, it's, it, I can't it, draw a comparison. And in terms of in-ring ability, I'm sure that they're a lot closer than main perception would be. It's just the way that Paige has been used for the last two years it has not been that great. Yeah. Um, and I, the reason I bring this up as well is because I firmly believe that she shouldn't be on the outside of these of this horsewomen revolution. She should be part of that. She's good yeah. enough to be that. But it's a, a bit of a shame that Matt, like, I've said before that I feel like maybe she's the martyr, right? She's the one that we needed to change things just a little bit so eventually a cascade could come in with Charlotte and Becky and Sasha she's yeah. going to be one of those one of those women that unfortunately has to not get all the fruits of that labour sort of thing I don't know but hopefully down the line that will change another interesting interview this week John Cena said that he's not a fan of UFC and the reason I bring this up Matt you may be thinking Matt 
Well, this isn't really news. I wanted to explain to a few people here why if John Cena was a fan of UFC, he wouldn't even be able to say that he was, even if he, even if he was. Um, and the reason being, Matt, is that John Cena is the face of WWE. Yeah. The biggest, the biggest name currently in the company. His voice. If he turned around and goes, and I watch UFC, those people are like, UFC? John mm. Cena likes, I should look into UFC. Yeah. So even if he isn't a fan, which I'm not going to say he's lying, he might not be a fan, but I just want to explain to people that when you've got someone like John Cena who's saying he's not a fan of something or he doesn't endorse something, you need to make sure that not only is it, is, is it him saying that, it's WWE as well. His voice carries WWE's banner. His, his appearances yeah. carries WWE's banner. You need to make sure that, w, that um, like Vince's hand isn't buried up his arsehole yeah. sort of thing and turning him into the puppet. Yeah, and now... I'm sure he's been briefed to say complimentary things to things that WWE doesn't, because of course they've got to, they've got to appear that way. And John Cena was saying some nice things about them being fantastic athletes, but not being a fan. One of the things I thought he said was absolutely asinine, considering the quality of the product normally, is that well we tell stories, and I believe that we tell much better stories. And it's like, but the UFC stories at the moment are better stories than what you're doing because they're genuine, they're real, right? And it's yeah. It, you've got this opportunity to tell us like fiction but you're not really going outside the box you're telling us a lot of the same stories and that's the problem um, but here's the thing perception is key WWE protects its perception and what people think of it with absolute dedication 100% so John Cena he's an extension of, of WWE more so than any of their other talent when he says that he's a fan of something or isn't a fan of something it actually means far more than him just saying that. It means that the company is not a fan of this. A company is a fan of this particular thing. Yeah. So I just wanted to explain that to a few people because um, it gets you into the mindset of just of corporate America, right? And how much perception is so important. So I want to bring that up there. Sad news here now, Matt. ECW star Bulls Mahoney has died this week aged 44 a week uh, a week or so after Axel Rotten passed away yep so two ECW uh, legends if you were passing away uh, Balls Mahoney died 44 um, what, I think that's very startling that's roughly the same age that Rotten died as well 44 guys that's quite young in my eyes um, yeah it, it's well to be fair in anyone's mindset that should be quite young yeah like, I, I don't see a lot of people getting very um, bringing up the age of these deaths um, a lot I think that's I think people should I think at 44 people dying at 44 shouldn't be shouldn't be accepted as a norm yeah um, <laughs> apparently he was answering like jeopardy questions like minutes before he died so I don't know to me that Matt that, I, they don't know the cause of it but if he was fine and it was almost instantaneous. That, that to me sounds like a heart condition. Yeah. Um, something that could just instantly just bang. That sounds to me like a heart condition, but I'm not entirely sure. Of course, I don't know anything in regards to the actual medical, you know, of, of what actually happened. But that's just my general thought of it. It's uh, it sucks. Um, we're losing a lot of wrestling wrestling legends. I don't know. Some people may say, well, of course, like Balls Mahoney, he was more of an ECW star, and sure, fine. But he was a legend in that company, right? He was remembered very fondly. We're losing a lot of guys this year. Over a yeah. course of 12 months, even just in celebrities and, and, um, and pop culture and comedy and anything that you would enjoy their work we're seeing a lot of legends in their particular fields pass on this year it's been a shitty year let's be honest um our thoughts to his family and friends that's really all we can say with that what do you yeah. what, what do you remember mo you you were more the ecw star matt what do you remember mostly with balls mahoney <sighs> joe worst of an oil park i can't even tell you just off the top of your head yeah no yeah he, he's one of those guys that um some people may remember because he did come in for a little while when ECW did its WWE version. Yeah. But it wasn't very long. Most of his stuff was Paul Heyman, right, in charge and and and, and all that. So, but yeah, it just sucks. Tragic stuff. Uh, even with Chris Travis, Matt, dying very recently due to cancer. Yeah. Um, there felt like a cut, like almost like a, a two months 
um, like a year ago where you and me were just like every single week this guy's passed away this guy's passed away and it felt horrible that every single week we had to say yeah it's another one another one's gone I think that age though the age 44 I can't get over that Matt I'm just thinking I know these guys put their bodies on the line they they lived a rock and roll lifestyle but it's like the new 27 club isn't it I just I don't I don't like it I don't like that myself but still uh, the last of our news uh, a little bit here was more stuff that happened at the end of last week. Well, not actually more stuff. This actually happened in the middle of last week, but it got more traction as the week went on, Matt. And it's Jeff Jarrett's bizarre cash for gold scheme. Have you heard about this? I haven't, no. So, you know that he's got Global Force Wrestling going on, right? Yes. So, on using the Global Force Wrestling name, he is setting up what is what sounds like the dodgiest pyramid scheme um, you know, immediately when you hear it, Matt, let me explain to you what he wants you to do. He okay. wants you to listen to a video. He doesn't tell you about this great opportunity he's doing, but he wants you to fill you out fill out a form that leads you to another video that tells you about the scheme. Where apparently you pay money in and you get like you basically it's a it's a gold scheme, right? That instead of sending them gold they give you money. It's not that sort of cash for gold. It's you in, it's basically you investing in gold, right? Right. And he's willing to put that this this whole thing that he's involved in, the GFW name on it. And I'm like, well, first of all, putting the GFW name on it, you're going to put that, that name on it. It's like GFW is the ship that never sailed, right? It never got anywhere. We, GFW, they talk about how they're going to revolutionize wrestling, about all these the wrestling roster they have, all these shows they're going to do, the TV tapings, Matt, that they're going to do. And it never happened. And nothing, yeah. Yeah. I've heard so much talk from Jeff Jarrett about GFW, about all this, and how it's going to be fantastic, and it's going to be this new television experience. Okay. Stop talking. Show us something. Otherwise, I'm not interested. And when it comes <laughs> Give out... Give me the product. <laughs> yeah, when it comes out with stuff like this, Matt, I'm like, even more so, like, I'm wary of this now. This, this sounds yeah. to me like he's trying to trap people into giving this guy money. And... It's a weird, a really strange fall from grace that this wrestling, you know, this, the, the, that Jeff Jarrett has done here with his company that never really seemed to have got started in the first place. It's just, this is bizarre, right? Matt, are you looking at giving uh, Jeff Jarrett any of your money? To, uh, no. To no, Jeff Jarrett will not get any of my money. His GF, like Global Force never got any of my time, so... Yeah. I guarantee you guys, there's obviously some fans out there that probably did because they trust Jarrett so much. I don't know why, but they trust him so much. Guys, don't. Like, just, this this would be an idiotic thing for you to do. You know? But, still. If you want to waste your money, sure, invest in Jeff Jarrett's gold. I'm sure it'll go quite far. That's it. Uh, any other news that you have this week, Matt? Um, I'm pretty sure you don't want to mention about TNA getting moved out. No, no, I'd much rather not talk about TNA, if I'm honest, but <laughs> that's just my honest opinion. It's, it's just another one of those where you, I can only just imagine you read that article and they went, well, I was right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It seems like with TNA, it's just a slow, gradual death, and it's getting boring at this point, and I'm like, eh, I don't really care, but still. As much as um, Josh Matthews can go on Twitter and rant about how everyone... That, he's become like the Dixie Carter secretary, how he just rants about everyone's against them. No, it's, it's you. <laughs> it's the company yes. itself that's against you, but still. All right, Matt, we've got some fan feedback, if you don't have any other news to show I've got us. nothing else to add, no. All right, then. Some interesting questions here this week. Cameron Hutton asks, Will Roman Reigns get a new theme or retire by next year and if so when will he get it Matt what do you think about this new theme or retire for right no no and no mm. I don't think he will I think he's now he is Mr. Bulletproof Vest and Shield knockoff yeah uh, I, I completely agree with you Matt and the reason I say this is once they started getting behind John Cena what changed about John Cena's entrance and his gear Colour. Yeah, he got he got colourful shirts every now and then. I'm sure Roman Reigns will get plenty of different colour shirts for him. But his his general gear was his was his you know his fucking shorts, his sneakers, yeah. 
his armband. That really didn't change. And the reason they do that is because they see changing those little things like the music and what they wear as changing the brand of that guy. Yes. And when that guy is the head guy of your company, that's a very scary prospect for WWE to take on. So that's the reason why they didn't change Cena at all for 10 years, basically. Yeah. Um, so no, I don't see... Like, you're seeing a change already that he's not coming out with the fans anymore. I think, I think that's because they genuinely feel like he's going to get stabbed. The fans are just going to boo at him, yeah, and yeah, all that problem. Yeah, it's... Um, I don't think he's going to just suddenly start going down the fans again. I think he is... Now that's done. I think that he's just going to be a yeah, guy. It. But um, He gets booed with so much force, he gets pushed down the stairs just by... The, f- the pressure <laughs> the peer pressure itself like, just like yeah the him. sheer sort of sound pressure of the boo <laughs> is enough to push a man sends him on his way sends him on his way um, but yeah that's that's my answer for that no I don't think they will I think all the changes you've seen with Roman so far is what you're going to see and even if he turns heel which I'm not entirely sure WWE will do I think they're going to try and stick it out um, then I still think he's going to stay stay with the gear he's got but that's just my personal opinion yeah Billy McGee responds to uh, our que- uh, one of the questions that we got last week in terms of wrestling themes. He's got a few. Uh, he's got one here that he liked, which was the Imagine Dra- uh, Dragons monster for Daniel Bryan's Mania video package. And the reason I brought this up, I don't normally bring up responses to questions. I'm actually, I'm like, yeah, that's a fantastic theme. In fact, the reason I bring it up, Matt, do you remember this video package at all? I do, yeah. And whenever I watch it, Matt, I genuinely get goosebumps. Like, it's it's an absolutely awesome video for that actual match. And then the song for it was absolutely perfectly picked for that match. It's it's fantastic. Uh, to me, that's one of the best pre-match video promos that they've ever done. Yeah. And um, that was just before, if you remember, Matt, that was just before the Triple H-Daniel Bryan match at WrestleMania 30 that they did that. Yeah. Just excellent. Just fantastic. I got on the... That is, I because they, it, it, it's one of the ones that if you search on YouTube, WWE actually put up that actual promo, that video package on their YouTube channel, so you can actually go and watch it. Yeah, they put it up again, um, like as a result of his um, retirement. Oh, they what? They re-uploaded. Yeah, it. they re-uploaded it re- yeah. fairly recently. It's it's just great. It really is, and it's good. It's good. And they did a version of it as well where he wins the title. And um, that was that was good stuff as well. So um, he also asks if we uh, if he was the only one who hated Gallows and Anderson's debut this week. Oh yeah, interesting. It was them debuting. I'm sure we're going to talk about it more in depth later on. Yeah. Um, I think Matt that some people get themselves very hyped up about a team that is going to need some general education to the crowd, right? So you can't have him come in and have like 30 minutes of a match the first week in. I, I, what I'm saying... You've got is... to consider that to us... Well, the thing is, like, well, yeah, we'll discuss it later on, mm. but to the general crowd, all they saw was a bald man and Festus. Well, no, I mean, it, it, in terms of if they remember what he was before, right? I'm sure... Part of them probably don't, to be fair. They're yeah. probably too young. yeah. Um, I thought their debut was actually fairly good, and I, I will go into it later on. I thought it was uh, pretty, pretty decent. Yeah. If one thing you could take away from it, Mac, that Carl Anderson's, Anderson, sorry, his punches look absolutely fucking savage. He looks like he's beating the shit out of um, yeah. one of the Usos when he's battering there. I don't know why. It's just when he's doing it all, oh, it looks, it looks, looks good. But anyway, yeah, we'll talk about it much more in depth later on. But um, I know there's, I know you're not the only person that disliked it. Some other people did. I think some people, and WWE is guilty of this as well because they were hyping it huge themselves. They overhyped themselves for. They're a tag team. They're not like a solo huge act. They're not. As much as I like them, they're not Nakamura. They're yeah. not Styles, right? They're great, but they're not that. So still, MC Schwabo brings up the case of Zack Ryder. Matt, he wants to know if we think this is it for Zach, if it's his last run being relevant. What do you think, Matt? Um, I don't know. Do you think it's definitely a it's definitely a sort of valid query. Mm. Mm. I will say, though, that this rivalry was created, him winning the championship as well, 
was created to get the Miz over as a heel, the Miz and Maurice thing. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't for Zach at all. Um, I'm inclined, Matt, to say I do think it's his last. I think it's his last championship win, in my opinion. And the reason I say that, Matt, is because the longer time goes on, the more years go on. Yeah. More NXT stars come up. More tag teams come up, even if he was going to be part of the hype bros, right? Um, the more people will want to see the likes of Sami Zayn and um, Chad Gable, Jason Jordan, they're going to want to see them winning championships. Yeah. You know, even people that want to get behind Zach, eventually they're going to be like, well, Zach's had his time. As I know it sucks that he didn't get the time that he needed, but he has had his time. I think it would actually hinder the hype bros on the main roster as well. I don't think they'll get over at all. I think they'll get booed to shit on the main roster. Yeah, but then it's... It, I think... I don't think they'll get over either. No. But I don't think it will. I don't think it will be helped by the fact that it's like, oh, and Zack Ryder, who's the veteran, was, it's, you know. But that's like, you remember original NXT where you had someone like Jericho was a veteran, yeah, yeah. was the pro, mm. and that made sense because it's fucking Jericho, yeah. But also, The Miz was a pro, yeah. They're not nearly on the same level. That's kind of the same sort of thing that I'm thinking. Is the fact they go like, "Oh, Zack Ryder's the veteran, but he's not really a veteran, is he?" Yeah, yeah. No, I completely agree with you there. It's um, uh, they had a lot of that with, uh, like you say, with, with that NXT thing, and you had like our uh, truth being like one of the guys and uh, as one of the mentors. When back then he was, he wasn't even he didn't even have his match with John Cena at that point, right? It's for the title yeah. and things. So. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. I think the main thing that will that will mess them up if they if they bring them up, it's gonna uh, as much as I kind of like I kind of want them to succeed, but any other time I'm like, uh, it's Mojo Rawley. Mo, Mo, I think Mojo Rawley will will nosedive it, and it is unfortunately because <laughs> I know it's quite funny this. He's too hyped, and he's gonna go around. He's gonna go into these dead crowds. He's gonna jump up and be like, yeah, get hyped, get hyped, and they're gonna look at him and be like, shut up, I don't want to, fuck off. And he's yeah. going to start getting booed for it. It's almost you like, ain't hype. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's going to be. Um, it's, I think. I think it's going to die of death. And I to think, be honest, I think Matt, it's like a fair, fair example. Like we know someone who I met Craig, who we went to, to take over London with. Mm. He is not a Moly, um, a Mojo fan. Mm. He's not a Rawley fan, and it's just like I had to send him the picture. We're just like, sorry, Mojo. Craig ain't hyped. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, to me, like, it's just it's one of those things that either it gets over great and fantastic, and you've got something going. But like with Mojo, to me, I don't even think he's that great of a talker. I think he just is loud. Yeah, and people eventually get bored of that. They want to see you do. That's the reason why Enzo Matt is so good. Yeah, he makes a lot of noise, and yeah, he does have his shtick. But when he does his other stuff, right? When he talks a bit of smack outside of his. Bada boom, re- he, you know, real sky in the room. He does have great promos behind him, right? Yeah. I don't think that Mojo Rawley really has that. So when they, I, when... I, to be fair, to be honest, I think the prime example is their debut. Like for a talking smack promo. Oh, well, Enzo and Cass, yeah, yeah. yeah they, they for Enzo against, um, like against the Dudleys, mm. and like his, just against Devon was great. Yeah, yeah. And again, this week I thought they were pretty good as well, right? So yeah, agreed. Um, good stuff there. I just think that um, that with every new NXT come NXT star comes up, I think that window gets a little bit cl- uh, a little bit a little bit shorter, right? A little bit it gets hard, you know, it closes up a lot more with every new guy that come in, and they brought in a lot of new guys recently. Yeah, and I think they're going to bring in more as the year goes on. So. Yeah. And that's not even just NXT guys as well. Mm. All right, there's, there's guys that are bringing straight in to the main roster, like Gallows and Anderson, right? So And Styles. And Styles, right. Uh, Zio Cage asks if we uh, if we feel the tag belts got a similar revamp. If we feel if, if the tag belts got a similar revamp like the women's did, uh, maybe go with the half and half design of the NXT championship. Um, Matt, I don't know about you. But I think those uh, those um, WWE Tag Team Championships suck. I don't like them at all. I hated them ever since day one. Yeah. Big cup, the, the two, like the 2P coins. Yeah, they're bronze. They're, they're the bronze look on them. It looks... It, i tell you what's wrong with it, Matt. It doesn't stand out. 
It fades, yeah. right? Um, I, and even the design of the Spartans, I, that's fine to me. It's just because of the bronze, it just doesn't look. It doesn't yeah. look. It doesn't look fantastic. You look at the WWE Championship; it's got like fucking gemstones, and diamonds on it. Um, yeah. Now the women's championship has as well. Yeah. Right. So now you've got um, even like the the Intercontinental Championship. At least it's got the white straps. It shows up a little bit more. Yeah. The tag belts they just look quite boring, and they. That's um, it. Now the NXT titles, Matt. I've been quite a fan of them when they do the half and half design. If they are going to do a new championship title belt, which I haven't heard at all any rumours of them thinking of doing a new tag title belt, then I would be much happier with them doing a similar sort of... I don't even say they have to do the same design, but the same it idea. Would, yeah, I mean, I reckon it'll probably still... I reckon they'll probably still go with the fact that it has to look like the current World Heavyweight Championship belt. But you could do a half and half on that fairly well. Yeah, like even if you do like... Um, um, I don't know. Maybe they could do something along. Like, I'm sure they can. They can figure something out, right? Yeah. But it, I think they. I think if they did a half and half, I th- I do think it, it makes more sense, right? That to me. But uh, I don't know. I, don't know. I think the, the NXT tag belt is just great. I love it. Yeah, I think everyone can agree that at very least, uh, even if you yeah. like this title belt, I think people can agree that it just doesn't stand out. Right, it do, it doesn't it doesn't make people look like champions. To me, when I look at the new day, I'm looking at the new day. I'm not looking yeah. at the fact that they are they got the title belts. Right that right. they're oh, you don't agree that they, every time you look at them, you're looking upon the W <laughs> E E. You couldn't you couldn't stop yourself there, could you? you just, I had to. Yeah, were you were you gyrating as you did that as well? I may have rotated a little <laughs> bit. <chair. laughs> I expect that of you, Matt. I expect it at this point. It's a little bit of a hip wiggle. That's it. Um, so yeah, that's that's our answer on that. Kane Saint Dennis asks, "What are some tag teams? Tag team feel in these uh, in these uh, questions? Tag teams? Uh, do we think should go into the Hall of Fame? I think the Hardys. That question. I think you got the Dudleys. With that question. Um, two. They're two teams that that revolutionised tag team wrestling. Heart Foundation. Uh, so here's the thing, though, Matt. Would you put them in separately, or would you put mm. them in as a team? Because Brett is already a Hall of Famer. True. So here's the thing. There's some guys like Edge and Christian that, sure, you could put in as a team, but they're good enough individually, in my eyes, to go in separately. Yeah. Um, whereas I think the Hardys... I mean, Jeff Hardy, maybe, because he, he was champion. He won the title, right? Um, I think I'm just saying about the heart, just because... Like I want British Bulldog in there. Oh, you want the full like group? You want Owen Hart, British? Bulldog. Yeah, Owen deserves it. Yeah. Even then, though, Matt, we talked about Owen Hart and British Bulldog. How it seems like their families aren't too happy with them being inducted, but uh, but still, um, New Age Outlaws, Matt. I think they 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 need a uh, induction. Uh, absolutely. Well, as long as Dunn says he won't, you know, be snorting cocaine or whatever backstage and. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although he's, um, he, he wasn't doing coke, man. He, oh, he, I don't even know. I he, forget why he got fired. He, he took a few enhances for his bodybuilding stuff, if you that's remember. That's it. what got him in trouble. Um, but yeah, I, and that won't happen until that blows over, by the way, the New Age Outlaws induction. That will only happen once they're okay with getting Billy Gunn back. So that's the, the bottom line of it there. But yeah, there's a few of them there. I'm sure there's quite a few others outside WWE that maybe need to look in. The one I mean, the trouble me. is, like, you think all of, all the great tag teams, but then you're thinking all great, all great, all good things must come to an end. Mm, yeah, and they go off and do their own thing, mm. and that's where, like, Edge was perfectly justified getting his own induction. Yeah, as Edge, mm. but the multi-time world champion, yeah. the multi-time world champion. But Edge and Christian is worthy of going in, sure. But otherwise, it, it kind of takes it away. From, like when people say Ric Flair is the two-time Hall of Famer. Yeah, yeah. It's like because yeah, of course the horse, the four horsemen deserve to go in. But then you'd be like, you'd be sticking a lot of people in amongst the same category. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. It, it, then you're starting to make things a bit too complicated when it comes to these. Hall of Fame inductions. I already yeah. don't like the fact that Ric Flair is a two-time Hall of Famer. So that to me doesn't make sense. So, and and Matt, and I'm not I'm not disagreeing that the that the four horsemen should have been inducted. That's fine. 
but you either make a choice that you that you don't induct Ric Flair again. He's already been inducted. You just make it so you don't get two rings. You just get one. I I don't I don't, I don't know. It's, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I think it's silly, but still. Uh, Anthony Smash asks a bunch of stuff, so I decided to pick out a few of them that I think I could give good answers to. Uh, he brings up the rumours of Nakamura being injured. Uh, quick answer to that. He is injured, but injured in the sense that he got staples in the back of his head. You can actually yeah. go and look at the staples being put in. WWE put up the video. Yeah. It was quite gruesome. But he's good to go. Don't worry. He's Apparently, he's already wrestled since then. So, yeah, there you are. And the thing about Nakamura is that he hits hard, and he expects he is, you to hit him back. He is the hard. king of strong style. Yeah. He's not afraid of getting kicked in the head just as much as he's going to kick you in the head. So that's what I'm like. Joe, one thing I'm loving, I'm loving all these pictures of him and Asuka backstage. Mm, mm. Oh, she's loving him being around. Literally, her Twitter feed is literally just excited for Nakamura. Pictures of her with Nakamura and uh, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, it must be nice for her, though, right? Because I know, I know you've got... Um, she's got a Tommy. But still, it's still another person from, you know, from where she is. You know, reminding her of home. You know, you've got to remember these guys are, you know, they're so far away from their homes, right? A little bit homesick, maybe. You know, I know I they're... see it like cultural and ev- like in every aspect. I know they travel like, like, Steve, and like, everything, but huh? still. Go Pardon? on, go on. No, it's like when you say like you get people that's like, oh, I'm like I'm so far from home. Like you get with like Paige and things like that. It's like, yeah, I get that. It's really far, but like England's not too dissimilar to the state sort of thing it's yeah. still a very it's still the western culture sort of thing yeah it's still but it's like yeah. it must be like a massive culture shock for someone like Asuka or like Nakamura it's like this is weird yeah I know Nakamura apparently he's a big fan of western culture but still it's a different from being a fan and then living in it right I was going to say he has to be a fan of western culture his gimmick is two thirds western culture yeah yeah pretty much yeah um but yeah, that's that, that that's that's here with Nakamura you're gonna you're gonna see a bunch of stuff of him getting patched up and everything. It's how he wrestles and how he wants to wrestle how he how he wants other people to wrestle him. So yeah. you can be damn sure that he's not upset with the person that put those stitches in the back of his head. That's just So like you better be ready to kick the shit out of me. Yeah. Because I'm gonna kick the shit out of you. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Uh he also asks if Daniel Bryan will go into the two thousand seventeen Hall of Fame. I think there's a very good chance he will, Matt. And the reason I say that, WWE is going to want to capitalise on his relevancy before uh, it starts fading away as the yeah. years go on. So that I do actually believe he will get inducted next year. What do you yeah. think? Do you think he's got a good chance? Uh, I don't know about next year, but yeah, I reckon he, he'll he be going in soon. Yeah. So, I reckon it'll, it'll be like the edge sort of thing, where it's like, oh, it really fucking sucks that you get having to be forced into retirement. Here's a Hall of Fame ring. Bye. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually do believe it will be sooner rather than later, and I I am and I'm actually quite shocked that they didn't induct him uh, last year. You know the the WrestleMania just gone because they did edge very quickly like that as well. They literally just said yeah, yeah. okay straight away like he is that year. Um, although actually now I say that I mean Edge retired straight after Mania, so maybe it does make more sense that um, Brian would be inducted at thirty. Give it a little bit more time. Yeah, that's it. Um, but still, yeah, I do. I do firmly believe it'll happen, and I think it will happen sooner rather than later. Because WWE don't want to leave it like ten years. Brian's been away for ten years, then bring him back. They want to make make the most of it here and now. So, all right, Matt, did you watch any of the NXTs this week? Uh, no, you didn't. I, I watched Takeover again. I did. I'm not going to talk that much about it, except for the fact it gives you an opportunity to see Nakamura and Ty Dillinger in a match, which was actually quite funny. At I've point. heard, actually. I knew I knew that they wrestled, as well as... Bailey oh. and Liv Morgan. Yeah. yeah. I think Liv Morgan did quite well this week, so... good. For, I'm not hugely sold on her gimmick, but I thought she had a good match, so... I don't know, do you know what? I still, to this day, couldn't even tell you what her gimmick is. She's basically the New Jersey. She's the, Yeah, she's the bouncy blonde from New Jersey. Yeah. That's... That's it. Pretty much, that's exactly what it is, and we're, there's, we haven't been allowed to know if there's anything different from that from so far. But I think Liv Morgan, Matt, when you she's one of the women there that I think there's something they they could use. Um, and I'm not entirely convinced with some of the women behind, like Bailey, Asuka, Nia Jax. I'm not completely convinced with like a Peyton Royce and Billy Kay because I just haven't seen them wrestle that well, right? And that's just being yeah, just yeah. being honest. So. Yeah, hopefully they put a little bit more emphasis on like the Alexa Blisses, 
Liv Morgans, some of the other ones that, you know, that haven't been given as much time but are fairly okay because they need to build up that division a bit, right? Because they, I think they're, mad, they're still struggling a little bit over the fact that they had three women taken away months ago. They're still trying to face yeah. some of these women in, but it's just going to be a slow, a slow process. So I do, I do say, guys, honestly, if you want to go watch NXT, if you have got the time and a spare hour, go for it. It's fine. It's a good show. It's all right. I, I just wanted to watch Takeover again. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we can watch. Yeah, I watched. Um, Style, no style. Sorry, um, Nakamura and Zayn. Like I'm not that far in yet. So. Again, but I'm, I'm like, I liked this. Mm. I like it again. You know, it's like you know. Sometimes you're like, it was all, it was good. But when I went back and watched it, all like, like the the shine was gone, sort of thing. It's yeah. Like, nope. Yeah. I'm still very much enjoying this tag team match. I actually think that Takeover Dallas is going to be one of those shows that holds up over a long period of time. That you could yeah. watch it ten years in the future and it'll just it'll be just as good, you know, at that point. Yeah, that's good on that front. All right, then, Matt. It is time for your super sexy, amazingly difficult but intense, awesome challenge. And you don't even know the theme of this week's challenge. I do not. I am about to give you the theme. Are you ready? For your okay. trivia this week, it is wrestling stars in movies. Ah, okay. And they're little riddles, okay? I have five for you here. They go from stuff that I think that you'll get fairly easy to stuff that I'd be very fucking shocked if you got. So. Okay, so like Triple H in Blade Trinity sort of thing. Well, well, we'll see as we go along, okay? And and also a little hint here. Not all of these are films um, that were created by WWE Studios. Okay? Yeah. So, so when I say wrestling stars in movies, doesn't have to mean that WWE made said movie. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Are you ready? Okay. Are our fans ready for this week's trivia? Number one. I think you're going to get this literally just for me saying this right off, but here we go. Vinnie Jones starred across this wrestling star <sighs> who would be more at home in a battle royal, not a battle royale. Yeah, that's easy. Go on then. Do you really need me? I think I'm look. I am looking at the DVD case right now. <laughs> it's uh, it's Steve Austin and it's condemned. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the things Matt, is that you have to give me the name of the wrestler and the and and the uh, and the movie and itself. the film. Yeah, okay, that's Matt, fine. You've Do I get half one? points if I can't remember one or the other? Yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah, so it's yeah, ten yeah, points yeah. on offer. That's two points right off the bat. There you go, Matt. Well done. Um. So, yeah, that was an easy one. I knew you would get that one, Matt. Maybe that got maybe some, of your, some of the other ones a little bit off. But, Matt, we, we, it's our, it's our uh, guilty little secret that we like this movie, even though it's, we know it's awful. Just Vinnie Jones. Yeah. Vinnie <laughs> calm Jones yourself down, sunshine. You ought to calm yourself down a bit. Yeah, good old Vinnie Jones. Number two. This wrestling star lived up to his moniker. Although, with Channing Tatum beside him, I doubt any women had their eyes on this particular... Oh, movie. Magic Mike Kevin Ash. Yeah, it is! Oh, nicely done. Nicely done. And I think I was quite quite right in saying, with Channing Tatum beside him, I'm pretty sure that most women didn't that even know Kevin Ash was there. Yeah. Um, so these are a little bit easy, as I said there, Matt. So yeah. you've got four points out of a possible ten so far. Yeah. Number three... This movie was all about a father and daughter bond, but I'm sure this wrestling's acting partner would like to go back to her modern family. Oh, this one's got you a little bit. Would you like it again, Matt? Would you yeah, like it go again? On. This movie was all about a father and daughter bond, but I'm sure this wrestler's acting partner would like to go back to her modern family. A father daughter bond. I'm pretty sure there's a few a few of our fans that would have got this dead on. The worst part is, I'm pretty sure that, that the worst... Like, I think it's Steve Austin again in Hunt to Kill, because that was such a terrible film, but that's kind of that premise. No. Um, I don't know. Do you want to make any random guess? Uh, I... Uh, fine. No. Rock, Triple H, I don't care. Who, someone. Okay. Uh, because you haven't given me a proper guess, I won't take any of those. That's fine. Uh, it is Triple H in The Chaperone. I did not see it, so... And the reason I say that, so, father and daughter bond, 
if you remember, Ariel Winter was Triple H's daughter in that, and that's how he. I didn't see it. And this wrestling actor's partner would like to go back to her modern family. Ariel Winter is best known from Modern Family. So there you go. If you say so. So. <laughs> I don't yeah. even watch that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you had no chance, Matt, on that one completely. Number four. Here we go. We're getting to some of the tough ones. Really tough, this one. This wrestler star traded in intergalactic warfare for a regular family life. Let's just hope that no one's recording oh, him this time. Fucking Hulk Hogan. In? Oh my goodness. Fuck. Oh my goodness, Matt. Come on. I want you to get this. It's Commandos. <gasps> oh. You're so close. <laughs> I genuinely can't remember the other bit. Come on, like Matt. Space Commando or some crap like that. Is that your guess? It's. I know it's not that, but I can't remember it. It's Hulk Hogan in a Commando space film. Oh, it's Hulk Hogan in... Supreme su- Commando. In Suburban Commando. Fuck's sake. Oh, Matt. Oh. Well done, though. Well done, though. I. You know, I'm even thinking... You know what? I'm giving you the two points. Yeah. I'm giving you on that one because uh, cause it, I knew you know it. But um, you know what, Matt? I always used to thought that this film was an absolutely huge success. I actually checked it up today. It actually didn't make back its money at the box office. No, it was imagine. a dump. Yeah. But, um, but you know, as a kid back then, I thought anything Hulk Hogan was in was obviously a huge <laughs> deal. So, still. Number five, Matt. After this movie, this wrestling star was tipped to become the new Terminator. He just had to survive Sean William Scott as a sidekick first. Ooh. This was the first question I did, but I had to put it last. Would you like it again? He was with Sean William Scott. Would you like me to do it again? Yeah. After this movie, this wrestling star was tipped to become the new Terminator. It's The Rock. He had to just survive Sean William Scott as his sidekick first. You are right that it is The Rock. What film did he have Sean William Scott as a sidekick in? This one's evil because the film I thought he had Sean William Scott as his sidekick in isn't the name of the movie that it ended up being. But I can't tell you that. What it actually is. Are you gonna Are you gonna give up on that one? I keep wanting to say walking to walk tall, but it's not walk tall because that was bloody Johnny Knoxville. Well, you are right on that front. I don't know because I honestly thought that walking tall was the one with Sean William Scott, and I got it wrong. So when I actually did the research for this, I had to uh, obviously put the the real one down. Yeah. Are you gonna give up? What is it? It's The Rundown with Sean William Scott. The what down? The Rundown. Yeah. And apparently, and the reason why I brought in the Terminator stuff, because if you remember at the end of that movie, uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is at the end of the movie. right? He makes like a cameo at the end. And apparently that sparked loads of rumours that he was going to be the new Terminator. The I didn't see it. There we are, Matt. You got seven out of ten. That is pretty damn good. I'll yeah. give you props on that, Matt. That is a stellar performance for uh, wrestling stars in movies. Um, so, good trivia. Did you like your trivia this week, Matt? It was good. I liked good. that one. Good stuff, good stuff. All right then, guys. We move straight in. I still have no idea what film The Rundown was, though. Yeah, to be honest, like that and Walking Tall blends into one. I know Walking Tall, he had that two by four. He was basically Hacksaw, Hacksaw Jim Duggan in that movie, just whacking people. Walking yeah. Tall was quite good. Yeah. I was half expecting you to go for, like, you know, um, like Kennedy or something in nah, nah, Behind nah. Enemy Lines. I didn't want to do all of them as WWE Studios movies because otherwise that would be. Oh, that's true. You know, uh, along those lines. But. Um, you know what's really funny, Matt? They actually did a sequel to Walking Tall. Do you know who starred in Walking Tall 2? No. Kevin Sorbo. Do you know who Kevin Sorbo is? No. Hercules. You know, in the old TV series, Hercules? Oh. Uh... He was in some other stuff. No, no you don't know Kevin. Okay, well, fine. <laughs> I'm sure there's some other people out there who know who Kevin Sorbo is, and I'm sure that he would be happy that some people know who he is. I do, but still. Anyway, Matt, have you got time for our Raw review this week? I believe I've got time. How about you? 
Uh, I think I've got a little bit of time. Maybe not as much as I would normally like. This this episode's going to be a little bit shorter, I think, than than the most are because uh, of um, uh, with me as well. I've got loads of loads of stuff to do with my wife. As I said at the start of the show, I've got to get, I've got to get stuff ready. I've got to be a good husband, guys. You know, That's the way it is. Guys, leave a happy birthday there for her in the comments. I'll show her and make her day. It really will. All right then, Matt. This raw, fresh from Los Angeles, California, IA, right? I sound like a prick doing that. Los Angeles, California. Yeah. Um, in the Staples Center, home of the LA Lakers. Uh, funny enough, with Kobe um, retiring this week, so that's quite big. Quite big and of course, JBL had to mention it. Yeah. That's it. Sports reference. Um, he dropped 60 in his final match, actually, which was pretty impressive. What, JBL dropped 60 sports references? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly what he did. In the final match. Um, and that's quite, yeah, exactly. And, uh, and we'll always remember JBL for those sports references. What a man. What a man. Uh, we're now on the way to what I uh, I thought it was Extreme Rules. But they've replaced it now with WWE Payback. So. Yeah. And it is WWE Payback, not Payback. It is WWE. Oh, do you remember that, Matt? WWE That's Payback. It. Okay. You can't say Payback on its own. It's not just Fast Lane. It's no. WWE Fast Lane. That's exactly what it is, yeah. Uh, Mania How can I Week... be so blind? So yeah. foolish. Oh, so foolish, yeah. Mania Week has officially cooled down a bit, right? And, uh, Matt, I actually had three days of no podcast work, which was bonkers, considering we've been go, 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 go for the last two weeks. So. The worst part is I heard that Raw was apparently good, so I was watching it on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, spoiler alert, guys. We like this Raw quite a bit, and we're going to go into the reasons why. Um, so, the show started off with Shane McMahon. We're told by commentary that apparently he's in charge for the second straight week due to overwhelming fan support. Now, there is a big, massive problem with this, and it isn't Shane being in control. It's the WWE cheapening their own stipulations a little bit here. Um, look, I love Shane being in control, Matt. It breaks up the monotony of the show. Yep. But when WWE cheapens own stipulations like this, it makes us care less about when they're trying to sell a match in the future. Because we remember, right? We remember that the authority got their jobs back after only two months of being out, right? We remember that. Mm -hmm. um, what is it with the McMahons and stipulations not counting and that shit just being reversed over a couple of months? It seems like whenever you put these guys in a stipulation, it just doesn't matter after a little while, but... Um, well, the thing is, you know the real reason, but well, nobody, but nobody, they won't like admit it on TV. Mm -mm. Go on. Ratings went up. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, oh, oh. ratings weren't that great on this on this episode though. They went back down to normal. So, but it was up. But if you consider how low they were for Raw after Mania, yeah, 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 yeah. And then people went, oh, like, um, like Shane's running it. And it was pretty good. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, he's running it again. I just, Matt, you know what I mean, though? It's almost like it's cheapening it, right? It's yeah. like, I'm pretty sure that down the line, Shane is going to be in control of of, of, of Raw. But I'm like, ah, oh, come on. Then then don't make that the initial stipulation. Because yeah, then you're, yeah, yeah. you're going to make these matches not mean anything. We're going to second guess ourselves whenever you want to get us invested in a big stipulation again. I don't know, it's just, uh, yeah. I, I don't like it the way they're doing it there, but he um, he tells us that Natalia will face Charlotte for the Women's Championship tonight that there's going to be a tag team tournament to decide a new number one contender for the championships all good, that will fill out the coming weeks with some meaningful matches there Matt so that's good stuff. That's it, we're getting what we like mm. number one contenderships yeah, not just throw-ins no, that's what I mean, though, man. I mean, it's like, until, like, the pay-per-view, every single week before then, we're going to have some matches that mean a very something, and it's going to build into something that means something very big. That they, Someone's going to get a title shot out of this, so it's it's good stuff. And you know what, Matt? What I like as well with this little tag tournament they've got going, they've got little rivalries in between them as they go along, so you're probably going to have Enzo and Cass against the Dudleys in this tournament, right? So, it's interesting stuff there. Um... So, with all that, he congratulates Styles on becoming the number one contender. He mentions the name of Roman Reigns and booze ring out hard, Matt. And I was thinking to myself, you know, LA, 
you know what? Like they're they're not the worst of crowds, but they're not known as a hardcore wrestling crowd. But Jesus, did he get booed? He got booed much more than I thought he would. Like he, it was almost deafening in the arena when they mentioned his name. Yeah. Um, this isn't going to go away, is it, Matt? They WWE are going to no, nope. no time soon. But obviously, they they hope you forget about it. Mm, they're going to struggle hard to keep him face. They're going to grit their teeth and keep it going. But I do think they're eventually going to be forced to turn him. But still, he says that Sami Zayn will face Styles tonight. And if Sami Zayn manages to beat Styles, he won't just take Styles' place, but he'll be added to that championship match. That's it. It was just sort of like it was a bit unfair considering Kevin Owens took him out of the, you know, he lost his opportunity because Owens was a dick last week. So yeah. here we go. That's Here's it. your chance again. Yeah, which is which is good, right? That's good stuff. It means we get a match on this show. I mean, Sane against Styles. Yeah, we're gonna like that. Thank you very much. But that match just isn't them fighting each other. It's meaning something. It's, it's for a reason. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Yeah, definitely. Um. Now, obviously, that doesn't sit well with Sam, Sorry, with Kevin Owens because when Sami Zayn gets opportunities, Kevin Owens isn't very happy about that. He thinks he's been screwed over. He tells Shane that. But Shane reminds him who powerbombed who last week through a table. And uh, that Owens just doesn't really give a shit. He's just like, I want my IC title rematch. I, 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 well, technically, he is still owed that. And Shane goes, well, you know what? If you manage to win your next match then you get that match of course Owens isn't quite happy to see Cesaro be the one that comes so one thing I quite like actually Mm -hmm. and it's kind of like a rule that I think should be brought in it's like yeah it's all well and good you you know you can instantly get your rematch clause yeah I think just like your rematch clause is now none and void if they lost the belt yeah, you know what, Matt? I wouldn't even like... mind if their rematch clause only allows them to, at uh, very least, be in the match that decides the new number one contender. That's all it does. So, like... Well, no, not even so much that. Like, I'd still have it as, like, yeah, you have your rematch clause, Like, but if you decide to cash it in in six months' time and that guy's dropped the title to someone else, mm. you didn't lose to this new guy. I see, so you lose your shot at that point, yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Um, so I, it's like, I, I want my my rematch clause. It's like, you didn't lose to the Miz. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like I like, I like that idea. I also like the idea, like I said there, though, where, where like, there is no rematches anymore in that sense, that you still have to wrestle someone to get the number one contendership. Just losing your title means that you don't just like go to the bottom of the heap. Then you're like the number one ranked guy below the champion. Yeah. One or two go against each other. To decide who who would be all one, two, three, and four in a in a four way match, whatever. But you're always guaranteed that you'll be in that match to decide who's the who's the number one contender. That way, yeah. if you don't want to do a rematch, or if you do want to do a rematch, the person who's lost that championship they get a win straight off the bat to, to become the new challenger. And that way, you yeah. So there we are, Matt. This was a refreshing opener because one, it's in a face authority figure. And two, it's just someone different than Triple H and Stephanie, right? And three, it wasn't that long. Yeah. Uh, and it's one of those things, like, listen, Shane doesn't even have to be that good here. It's just because he's just a fresh face. He's someone new that we haven't seen it's a lot of. It's different. Yeah. So this leads to a match with Owens and Cesaro at the start of the show. Man, I am glad that the Bond-style suit and intro for Cesaro wasn't just the one-off where, they, where he actually walks on to the thing and he's got they actually got the Bond style yeah like a uh, thing on 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 like the stage for him and then he rips off his suit and everything like that I like that I, I'm glad he's keeping that do you know the one thing I don't like about it go on I, I only really noticed it in the backstage segment mm. the earpiece oh, I didn't even notice this go on he's got like a he's got like the security like doorman's earpiece Okay, so he looks like a bouncer sort of thing. Yeah, so he now looks less secret agent, more doorman. Yeah, okay. He needs to get rid of that then. I I didn't notice it myself, but uh, I'm going to be on the lookout now. I I mean, guys, if you remember, Cesaro is a guy that Matt, on record here on this show, said he would build an entire brand 